Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're taking a look at the new Blackmagic Design DaVinci Resolve 18 on an M2 based iPad. If you are interested in how computers run and what hardware you should buy for DaVinci Resolve, this is your channel. Click subscribe. On the topic of the day, I'm going to tell you the M2 chip in this iPad is phenomenal and the iPad OS instance of DaVinci Resolve takes advantage of it with some quirks. Let's take a look. First thing we'll do is launch Resolve. You can see it's got a nice shiny new overlay screen here. As this starts up at the bottom, we have the cut and the color page. It's missing one of my LUTs, no big deal. Just a small color transformation. The big deal is, however, that this can play 8K 10-bit 422 chroma subsampled footage. Look at this, plays it back perfectly. Man, my 4090 can't do that. Mm -mm. In fact, all of that work has to be done in the CPU over on my big workstation because there is no hardware decoder for 422 chroma subsampled footage. Happens to be in this tablet. Woo. That really affects your ability to smoothly cut and color this. If we jump ahead, you'll notice I've now got some Nikon Z9 8K, H.265, perfectly played back, life is grand. If you'll recall in the video linked above, I've got an iMac M1 based system that I benchmarked and it didn't come anywhere close to playing back this footage. And here's our first snag. Nikon's InRAW does not work here on the iPad OS instance. And I have to assume either it was some development work that they didn't have time for and, and maybe won't invest in, or it has something to do with Nikon's lawsuit in which they're getting sued for infringing, allegedly, on a patent from Red. Hmm. So I'm not sure how they're doing this or what they're gonna do about it. It may not come to the iPad. We'll see in the future releases. If we skip ahead even further, we're back to more 422 Chroma. You'll notice I can skip around. Scrubbing is not perfect, but it's really freaking good. This is 120 frames a second footage, and it is still 422. In a lot of cases, it plays back very cleanly, but if I've skipped to it very quickly, it seems like it has a hard time catching up. That said, it still smokes the 4090 system over here in anything that's got that depth of chroma subsampling. Here we are with some Nikon Z9 8K H.265 footage. And this is the first snag that I really hit with this iPad as we're running through this. This is the M2 iPad and it has the capability of decoding and playing this footage perfectly. However, there's almost like something switches on the inside. It's either a thermal barrier, which is not that hot, or some sort of library that isn't correctly called and doesn't have a perfect handle because I can play this back perfectly if I reboot the iPad right now. In fact, let's go give that a try. And now you can see it plays back perfectly. So there's something going on there. And there are a few other bugs in the software. I appreciate that Blackmagic went ahead and put this out. They gave us a date. They said it will be out by the end of the year. And they decided to ship it with what I assume are several known defects. I'm okay with that. First, it's free. We can help them test it. And second, they honored their commitment. This isn't vaporware. This is a real deal and very useful to me in its current state. So absolutely thrilled with this. Now I'm jumping ahead to a place where it truly excels. Here it's functioning exactly like my workstation would run. I can jump over into the color page and the color page is, wow, full featured. In fact, I've got my full nodes and I have the ability to use LUTs. Now notice I'm clicking LUTs up in the top left. Nothing's happening, right? I've noticed I have to click gallery and then LUTs and then boom, there they are. I can load up whatever LUTs I like. I'm gonna load up my Sony LUTs inside the leaning and I drag them over, drop them on and it can't find the lookup table even though it's in there. So I found that there's, like I said, several things that have to be fixed. So watch this, as I grab down here at the bottom of the gain wheel, I'm gonna use this mouse so you can see it. If I grab this and I grab it and go to the right, it should be raising the exposure of the highlights instead of lowering the exposure of the highlights. In fact, it appears to be functioning like the offset wheel, which is every bit of color. I go to gamma, same thing. But if I go to lift, lift works like I'd expect it to. So it, it, it's kind of odd. Um, something gets quirky in here. It's not perfect. 
I'm still not mad at it. This is phenomenal. I can't believe all of this runs here on this iPad. Now this is an M2 based iPad. If it's anything like MacBook with an M2 in it, there's no reason to go pro anymore. There's no reason to go ultra or whatever else we're calling the next fancy chip. This thing would fly. And I'll show you what I mean here. Now I'm jumping ahead to what destroyed an M1 iMac when I was trying to run it against a 3080, 3090, and 4090. Link right there. You can see here, I can play back DJI's footage. I'd expect so, it's 10-bit H.265. I can now continue, but the fusion effects just fly by like there was nothing on the timeline to get in the way. You see, this effect seemed to have some sort of glitch to it, and this is a little slower than real time. But are you kidding me? The M1 totally quit, couldn't play any of these frames. The M2, with its computational capabilities, killing it. In fact, you'll notice this is likely two particle systems. You've got the embers coming up from the bottom, the leaves in from the left. This is just phenomenal, and I really wanna say thank you to Blackmagic Design for putting this out there. It is an amazing first shot. I can't wait to see what happens as you continue to improve this. If you have any questions for me on this or what works and what doesn't, let me know. Plenty of it works. You can easily cut and color something. You may hit a glitch or two here or there, but you can work around it and be incredibly successful in using nothing but an iPad to edit 8K footage. Wow. Thanks for watching. If you've ever had a question about what hardware you should use for DaVinci Resolve, this is your channel. This is what I do, and I'm pleased to have you watch it. Thanks for watching and have a great day.